From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. That's Garrett, Johnny, Sheriff's Office. You can quit looking for Edward Russell. We found him. Well, that's good news. Is it? He's dead. What? Yeah, been dead for three or four days. Where'd you find him? In a cabin on the other side of the lake. Your hunch was good. And expensive. What do you mean? It'll cost the company I represent a cool $50,000. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Amalgamated Life Associates, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Crystal Lake matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item three, $2.55. Telegram to Tom Wilkins of Amalgamated Life Associates, notifying him of Edward Russell's murder. I was reasonably sure the telegram wouldn't make Tom sleep any easier. I headed for the office of Ansel Garrett, deputy sheriff in charge of the Crystal Lake substation. Sit down. Not good, huh, Johnny? No, not good. Not good at all. Who found the body, Ants? A fellow named Bixby's waiting next door. I figured you'd want to talk to him. Thanks, I do. First, though, I'd, uh, I'd like you to run over what you know about this deal again for me. I want to know just where we stand in it. People at this resort pay a lot of money for peace and quiet. I don't want to disturb it any more than I can help. Good luck. The meaning? Meaning if you know where you stand in this deal, you're a lot better off than I am, and I've got a strong hunch a lot of peace and quiet's going to get disturbed before it's wound up. I don't like your hunches, Johnny. you got a way of proving out. <laughs> like the one about Russell being dead. I suppose you give me the rundown. Okay, okay. And I can make it short because there's not much to tell. The company I represent holds a $50,000 policy on Russell. About a week ago, he disappeared. His wife filed a missing persons report? Yeah, Leona Russell over in Denver. Yeah. She said her husband had told her he was going on an overnight business trip to Boulder. He never came back. His car was found in a garage in Colorado Springs. And his wife couldn't account for it? No. She said she was completely in the dark. I take it she's his beneficiary. Oh, yeah, sure. I thought of that, too. I asked her about it. What kind of an answer did you get? Tears, mostly, and a pretty withering look. Either she's completely clean or she's one of the best actresses I've ever seen. The rest of the story you told me... Now, Russell came into your offices several days ago looking for a guy named Bill, last name and description unknown. You know, like I said, there's a flock of Bills in this neck of the woods. Yeah, no. The bartender, the man who runs the boathouse, a clerk in a hardware store, a few assorted others. Mm. I uh, told you I saw Russell having a drink with Betty Norton the same night he came to see me. You check her out? Yeah, yeah. I had to go swimming with her in that sub-zero lake before she'd answer any questions, though. Then what I got from her was nothing. She said she'd met Russell at the hotel, had a drink with him, then left. That's all you've got, huh? That's it. Well, that's precious little to go on. I'll let you talk to Mr. Bixby. Oh, Mr. Bixby, would you step in here, please? This is Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Hi. Mr. Clarence Bixby. Hi. How are you? Not too good at the moment. <laughs> you got troubles. It was my cabin the body was in. Oh, the padlock had been changed, Johnny. Here it is. No fingerprints other than Bixby's. I monkeyed with it for a while until I realized my key wouldn't fit, and then I pried it open with a big screwdriver. Mr. Bixby, would you mind showing me your cabin and just what happened? I guess not. Doesn't matter much now, anyway. What do you mean? Well, I was going to show the cabin to a guy when we found the body. He wanted to buy the place. But who'd want to buy it now? <laughs> Bixby and I drove halfway around the lake. His cabin was a couple of hundred feet from the edge and had a good view of the water. Well, a nice spot here, Bixby. It was. You used the cabin much? Yeah, I haven't been able to regularly for the last couple of years. I got to figuring why I keep on paying for taxes and upkeep on it. So I decided to sell it. Did you advertise it in the papers? I did. The first crack out of the box, I got a hot prospect. He's the one you brought up here to show the cabin to. Huh? That's right. His name's Putnam. Putnam. I'd like to talk to him. Well, he's staying at the hotel. 
Probably looking for another cabin to buy. Uh, here we are. Hmm. Well, let's see. This is where the padlock was, huh? That was the first thing I noticed, that the padlock had been changed. The one I had on there was better. Whoever did it probably pried the first one off. Yeah, right here is where I, I pried off the lock this morning. Mm-hmm. Then what? And I opened the door. The body was on the floor right over here. Bullet hole in the floor. I see. Putnam turned green, and I... That was not, not a very pretty sight to find in your own cabin. No. Well, let's go sit outside. The dead man, Edward Russell. Did you happen to know him, Bixby? No. Never set eyes on him before. Why did they have to pick my cabin? <laughs> That's a good question. Hey, that cabin about 100 yards away, who lives there? Oh, that one? Owned by the Butler family. They spend their summers up here. Oh, maybe they saw or heard something. No, Deputy Sheriff questioned them. They arrived here three days ago. He figured that was the morning after the killing. I see. Have a cigar? No, no, thank you. What does it add up to, Dollar? Well, at the moment, Mr. Bixby, not much. I sat there and watched Bixby tie his cellophane cigar wrapper into a neat little knot. And I realized that was exactly my situation at the moment. The whole deal was a knot, and I didn't know how to untie it. I went back to the hotel. Item four, an expense account, $1.75. Telephone call to the dead man's wife, Leona Russell, over in Denver. It was very considerate of you to telephone, Mr. Dollar. The authorities notified me of what happened. They want me to come up there and confirm the identification. I see. You don't think it could be somebody else? Mm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Russell. I'm afraid not. Well, I guess I'd really given up hoping. All the time I was trying to tell myself he was alive, but... Um, yes, yes. Um, look, Mrs. Russell, have you ever heard of a man named Clarence Bixby? Bixby? No. Your husband was found in Bixby's cabin... Did you ever hear him mention the name? No. Okay. Thanks anyway. I'll keep in touch. I hung up and sat there a moment, thinking her over. She stood to benefit to the tune of $50,000 by her husband's death. She seemed on the up and up, and yet... Expense account item five, another call to Denver, to the police department. I wanted them to check, check on her, but I found out that they and Ansel Garrett working together were a couple of jumps ahead of me. They'd already checked on Leona and established the fact that at the time of her husband's murder here at Crystal Lake, she'd been in Denver. I decided to look up Putnam, the man who'd wanted to buy Russell's cabin. I found him in the bar at the hotel. If I tell you, it was quite a shock, Mr. Dollar. When Bixby opened his cabin door, the body sprawled there in front of us. It... <sighs> yes, sir, quite a shock. Yeah. How come you decided to buy Bixby's cabin, Mr. Putnam? Well, my wife and I had been on the lookout for a cabin for some time. When I saw Bixby's dad in the paper, it sounded like just the sort of place I was looking for. I see. So I answered the ad, made the arrangements with Bixby to come up here and have him show me the place. Mm-hmm. Are you still interested in buying a cabin up here? Uh, possibly. I've always wanted a place where I can come for rest now and then, but after what's happened, I don't think I'd be too happy in Bixby's place. Mr. Putnam, the dead man's name was Edward Russell. Did, uh, did you have him on? Of course not. Why? Ever hear of him before? See here, Mr. Dollar, what is your reason for asking questions like that? Surely you don't think I'm involved in this? No, routine, Mr. Putnam. Well, I don't care for the routine, Mr. Dollar. Well, look, I would... Skip it. See you later, Putnam. What pulled me into action was a glimpse I caught of the bartender. I started remembering a few things. Number one, Edward Russell had been looking for a guy named Bill. Number two, the bartender was one of several guys by that name here at Crystal Lake. Number three, something I saw on the bartender's face made me think he could be the bill that Russell had been looking for. I left Putnam's table and slid onto a stool at the bar. Hi. Hi. What'll that be? Is, uh, is that I.W. Harper there? Yeah. And soda. Coming up. Sort of quiet this evening, huh? Yeah, yeah. Been a little slack this season so far. I imagine it'll pick up later on this summer. Here. There you are. Thanks. Must have been quite a fight. Come again? You're wearing what looks like the tail end of a black eye. Oh, yeah, that. No, I, 
I bent down to pick up a bottle of mix the other day, and I bumped my face on the corner of the bar. You're, uh, sure that's the way it happened, huh? Where are you getting at, pal? Better take a look at my car now. Your insurance investigator? Yeah. A guy named Edward Russell was in here a few nights ago with Betty Norton. He was looking for someone named Bill. By some strange coincidence, your name is Bill. And by an even stranger coincidence, you've got a black eye. Okay, Dollar. So Russell did give me the black eye. I traded him a split lip for it. What happened? I still haven't figured it out. He was in here drinking. He started talking to Miss Norton. She called me by my first name, and suddenly this Russell heats up. He comes up to me and starts asking me a bunch of questions. What kind of questions? Well, mainly had I ever lived in Denver. I told him no, but he didn't seem to believe me. Got pretty insulting, and we ended up outside. He pasted me first, and I let him have one. Then I spotted the hotel manager and broke it off. They left right after that. Well, why the cover-up about hitting your face on the bar? Are you kidding? Look, how long do you think a bartender would last in a hotel like this if the management knew he got in a fight with a customer? Particularly if the customer winds up dead, huh? Yeah, I heard about the killing this afternoon. Tough, but I must say that guy was asking for trouble. I don't know what was eating him, but something sure was. You didn't see him after that night? No. Check on me if you want. Oh, don't worry, I will. I... Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? You said something a minute ago that just rang a bell. You said they left together after the fight. Who's they? Russell and Miss Norton. You sure about that? You sure she was with him when he left? Sure, I'm sure. You don't miss any tricks about a guy like that. He... Hey, look. If he told you different, I don't want to get nobody in trouble. That's where you and I differ, Bill. There's one person I want to get in trouble real bad. Who? The person who killed Russell. And right now, Betty Norton looked like an interesting possibility. I went outside and started walking along the lakeshore in the moonlight, thinking about it. She told me she'd left alone after one drink with Russell. But according to the bartender, she'd lied. She and Russell had left together. The motive stumped me, though. As far as I could figure, Leona Russell was the only one who could profit by her husband's death. Yet she didn't kill him. But Betty Norton, the girl who always had to play everything her way... I decided to have another talk with her and turned to go back to the hotel. Then I stopped. Out of the corner of my eye, I'd seen a movement near a tree on the slope above me. A shadow where there shouldn't have been a shadow. I scrambled up the slope. And there was nobody in sight. So somebody was keeping an eye on me. Somebody who knew this area pretty well. A nasty thought started pecking away at me. To wit, in getting closer to Russell's killer, I might be getting closer to something else, too. A bullet. <laughs> our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a girl who lied and a padlock that didn't. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Rice. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 